I have a question for the showrunners. I love your ears. Those are beautiful. Just beautiful. The cast interview to Rings of Power got a little bit weird, but that was far from the only problem. Well, a lot of the cast were good. Several of them were big Tolkien fans and they knew about their characters and the story. There were some people who may need to do a little bit more research. Play a, a sylvan elf. Nandor or Avari? Don't do this to me. Dylan and Sarah, can, can you tell us a little bit about the Harfoots? I'm going to defer to my wife. Dylan, can you tell us about the Harfoots? No. That armor that you're wearing is really beautiful. Is that representing an ant? Ask JD and Patrick. <laughs> After that, Stephen Colbert clearly realized he'd have to go a little bit easier on him. Are you a dancer? Uh, well, I do move. Other mistakes, though, which largely seem to be a marketing ploy and used to inflate one's own ego, uh, those are far more abrasive. Sophia, you have the honor of playing the first ever female dwarf depicted on screen. That is the sound of 7,000 people clapping because they've just realized someone doesn't have dangly bits. I certainly do, thank you so much. We live in a strange world where someone will thank you for pointing out they have genitalia. It's essentially the only thing in life you can achieve that doesn't require any talent. Lovely response. Tell me a little moment. bit about it. So real moment, thank you. Tell me it's a sobering moment. She must not have realized what she had before in her life. I don't know, would it require some kind of complex set of mirrors to work it out? I don't know what's going on anymore. The first female dwarf that we have ever seen on any screen. Screen. That's not true. You got beaten multiple decades ago when we saw Warwick Davis playing Willow Ulfgood. And of course, his wife, Kaya Ulfgood, because his wife, like him, was a Nelwyn. A Nelwyn dwarf. The first female dwarf that we have ever seen in the works of Tolkien. No, you're not. Even when you've moved the goalposts, you're still lying. They're in The Hobbit as well. This took literal seconds to find on YouTube of someone pointing them out in The Hobbit. Seriously, how little research did Amazon do for this? Uh, and I have the honor to host that revolutionary moment. Whoops, but these questions were scripted. They were written down, he was reading them. So they came from the top, they came from Amazon themselves, which might be why she keeps on repeating them. So, Sophia, I cannot tell you what a thrill it was to see you up on the screen as the first female dwarf. How amazing is that? It's a miracle. Certainly is, you need a time machine to go back and film this entire series before I was born. And so to be attached to Tolkien's works in presenting that revolutionary television moment. Even if you were the first, what revolutionary moment? To be somebody small? Calm down, you're making up your own jokes for that. It is necessary for the world, for every single race and world that we live in, for females to be present. There are times where you're live where your mind goes blank, but you still have to say something. And so you try and say something which actually has content to it. But what comes out of your mouth is a bumper sticker that says if babies weren't born, then civilization would end. Congratulations, Captain Obvious. You've managed to reduce a type B to a baby laying machine. Next, you'll be making comments about sandwiches. I auditioned for this role when I was two days away from giving birth. Can you see the stitching on the shoulders of the costume? That unravels so I could feed my child between takes. <laughs> She also got clapped for getting her baps out. Seriously, I don't know what's going on anymore. It's a perfectly natural thing. If you find it that impressive to squirt fluid out your body, I can just go for a pee. That is the power of a female dwarf. And most mammals on the face of the earth. Necessity for any great success story, there are females and uh, here I am. Ah yes, the best way to endear yourself to a brand new audience is obviously to become the embodiment of self-indulgent pride. And not the only one of the cast. We were talking about outfits and stuff like that. I was like, just wear something that makes you feel like a rock star. We're we're kind of reaching an apex, you know? Probably true, there's five seasons to go and no one's seen it yet. Now besides some off-the-wall wacky moments... Can you do, before we get started, can you do your trick? How was it going to the bathroom? I told Charlie this story last night. There are various zips and costumes that get in the way. Yeah, I had to listen for it to hit the water. Let's move it up. Wow! We also had some bizarre questions. What do you think is the biggest difference that we can all expect to see from the movie to this amazing show? Well, the show takes place um, more than 4,000 years before the films do. I have a question for the showrunners. With such a wide range of inclusivity in your characters, will there be any with physical disabilities as a proving point for that shows to include more actors with disabilities? Yes, there will, and yes, there are. Thank you for asking that, and 
And I love your ears. Those are beautiful. Just beautiful. Um, in fact, one of our lead characters, uh, who is very mysterious, uh, is, um, is partially deaf. Funny you should say that, because I'm partially sighted and colorblind with tinnitus. Can I get a part? Checkmate bigots. What do you think is the biggest difference that we can all expect to see from the movie to this amazing show? Well, the show takes place um, more than 4,000 years before the films do. <laughs> but out of the interviews did come some of the first information about the characters and the show itself. Kimon is the son of a very powerful man, the Chancellor, Farazon. I think with the kids of powerful people, sometimes oh. they feel pretty comfortable to coast. I'm glad that trust funders are being represented in the Middle Earth. That's beautiful. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad proud to that do we it. finally are giving them some representation. Although a lot of the information that we got really just backed up the idea that this actually isn't Tolkien. Largely because it can't be. Because they've deliberately set it in an area of his text where there just isn't enough information specifically so they could say, well, there was nothing written about it, so we just had to make it up. Although, as Wheel of Time and parts of the show has proven, even when the canon does exist, they'll just ignore it anyway, so, you know, it wouldn't have changed anything. The great thing that JD and Patrick have done is to give us something where we have mystery and we won't know where this character is going to end up. You guys won't know where he's going to end up, what his intentions are. Which is particularly unusual, because you should because all this should be in the books. And if you don't know where it is, and you don't know what to expect, then it means it's not in the books. And if it's not in the books, then it's obviously not from Tolkien, is it? It's from them. But you know, there's not a lot written about Lord Celebrimbor no. in the, the book. So how, I mean, as a nerd, you want to research, but there's not a lot there. How did you fill that out? Well, that's the best bit about this character is that there is, there's a, there's a blueprint. Uh, you have an opportunity to fill in the gaps and to find, make your own decisions, informed, of course, always by, by the world in which he's surrounded. But but uh, there's room. There's, there's room. So much Sounds rather ominous, doesn't it? Yes, there's room. I found room for me to do what I want to do. Now, to be fair, this guy spoke about how big a fan he was of Tolkien, what he'd done in the past, all the various different ways it affected his life before. But however you spin it, how many notes you found in the margins, how many different interpretations you think you can twist, you still come down to the fact that you have made this character. The showrunners have made this character. And the only person who hasn't influenced this character seems to be Tolkien himself. Oh, he gave me the blueprint but I filled in the details. And that seems to be a theme running through Rings of Power. We're not just going to read Tolkien and then reproduce it on the screen. No, this is a lot about interpretation, how we can twist it, the debates and analysis we can have that might be able to cram it into a different perspective. We've already seen people go out and do various different academic articles, which just take what it is, deconstruct it, and try and reform it into something that fits their new narrative, their new modern ideas. And a lot of what the cast speak about in this often and mimics those same lines. Now, the people that saying it are often the ones which say they were the biggest fans of him. But when you're paid to read the script and this is your future career, if somebody else has a different interpretation, which is against the one that you would know to be correct, are you just going to read the line anyway? Because then it sort of sparked debates on set, you know. Um, Sounds like the best set. You're having arguments over Tolkien mythology. Debates. And we get paid for it. Yeah. <laughs> the, the text is that dense that you do have the opportunity to interpret and reinterpret it. And, and words mean something different, you know, if you're talking about oaths or curses or <laughs> promises, you know. And so things like that, rediscovering things and seeing how they fitted into our world was like a really interesting sort of thing to talk about. Sophia, had you seen any of that before? I had. I had a glimpse of it. I cried. A lot. I have a feeling when people get to see it, that she won't be the only one. Seeing Galadriel in the original trilogy and in the Hobbit movies, what do you most want to bring to the character? I wanted to explore that the kind of serenity that Galadriel of the Third Age has is hardened and it comes through trials. I hope we see how hard it was to end up where she where she ends up um markella and megan can you guys talk to us a little bit about playing harfoots ultimately she just she leads with love and she she just wants everyone to do the same she wants to subvert harfoot tradition yes yeah, subvert tradition everything that came before is bad everything in the future is going to be amazing if only we can cut the chains of where we came from that viewpoint seems like a bit of a problem when you're working from a classic piece of literature i was one of the bigger harfeet also thank you for telling us what the plural i think it's <laughs> The plural is actually it's half, actually half, half, half it's, it's, it's The women, you know, we could see all of us just going. <laughs> yeah. I felt it, I felt it. This is 
life imitating art. Life imitating art. In the show, prepare to see a load of men getting everything wrong, and all the women go, I can't believe he's doing this. He's got it all wrong all over again. Yes, it seems that's the show you're going to get, which isn't surprising considering it's been entertainment that we've had for years. But all of that pales in comparison to the next two subjects, the first of which is the sheer disdain that they had for Tolkien's biggest fans. Well, I do want to correct my earlier statement about him being an elf to, to this, which is that he's half elven. Um, okay. Important. One person on Reddit is now sad. No, they're, they're mad because they were just typing it. They're like, mm, excuse me. Uh, I see you. Uh, do you feel like you could write words now in Numenorium? Please don't make me do it. Okay, well, Why? no, not now. That'll be for yeah. a future con when someone comes up and goes, hey, excuse me, the curve on this letter is actually incorrect. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I don't want to put you through that now. It's coming, um, yeah. Yeah. Because then we have the biggest issue, because a lot of the cast, they were talking about Tolkien, they were focused on the text and on the show itself, but then there were just those people who were so self-obsessed, so self-indulgent, that they thought that they were the ones that mattered, that it was all about them, and the real world, and their personal beliefs about it. We've all met the people who think entertainment is no longer about being entertained, no. Now everything is about preaching about the real world. Cynthia, you play Queen Regent Muriel. First of all, she's a canonical character, very important, but not described that much. You know, when I initially sort of tried to do the deep dive, you know, hard to find much, so I kind of really had to, I would say, look within. The state of the world being what it is, there was a lot in my mind, a lot in my heart, and Midiel for me was sort of the place to put all of my thoughts, you know, both personally and just in terms of, you know, everything going on in the world. And Midiel, for me, there is really that sense of wanting to do right by her people and guide them and... Yeah, now not only do you have to have a middle-aged woman's midlife crisis in it, but also she's going to guide you through the world. And once you kick it off, it was all over the place. The same people repeating it in every single interview. Bronwyn, can you tell us about the, the people you're part of? What I love about the writers on this show is that they have given every woman on the show such agency we don't serve the men around us i guess i'm never getting that sandwich then she also taps into her inner lioness and i as an activist i tapped into what i believe women are doing for my homeland sort of liberating and redeeming the southlanders who back you know in her ancestors days chose evil over good my favorite part of that quote is stephen colbert's reaction afterwards where he's just like right but then we hit peak fart sniffing. And to honor, honor the depth of the variety and diversity within the elven world. It's so great to be able to have so many faces now to extend um, the accessibility for people like me to see themselves staring back at them in such a huge franchise. What do you mean people like you? What we should be doing is hiring the best people for the role, which also fit into the world as judged by Tolkien himself. So you take the aesthetic of the world he created and the descriptions of the characters that he wrote in the books, and then you find the best actor that you can which meets that criteria. That doesn't sound like that's what she's suggesting. It's not more acting roles have opened up and I'm the best person for the job so I got one. No, it's more acting roles have opened up that I'm considered for. Oh, I'm getting chills. I'm literally getting chills and tearing up because when you, it's hard time in your life. We can do it too. And we can do it. Yeah, We can absolutely. do it too. And um, yeah. And for me, it was very important since we, we were creating something new to honor that, honor the opportunity also as, you know, you can see here, it's a very diverse cast and a, a lot of us are firsts, you know, so I took that too hard. I wanted to bring a little bit, uh, a lot of myself, of my upbringing and also my heritage. Your heritage is what? An elf? The only heritage that should be brought into this is the lands in which Tolkien created. You could argue that English heritage should be innate throughout Tolkien's work, considering that is the land that he created it for. But apart from that, you shouldn't be bringing yourself or your heritage into his universe at all, because what you've got are very different creatures who come from different places than you do. You're meant to be an actor, and that means you're in their shoes, not them in yours. If you go into a role and you're just you, you're a terrible actor. Your heritage has nothing to do with it, because anything you bring from it will be innately alien. It will feel like an invasive thing on the actual work itself, because Tolkien created the world to be a certain way, to be a holistic piece. And all the heritages that he wanted in that world, 
he wrote into it. And I highly doubt when he wrote them, he had you, personally, individually in mind. Unless you were big mates with him at the time, all those years ago. But I think this gives a taste, an insight, of what we can expect from the show itself. A lot of the actors did profess to be big Tolkien fans, and I have no reason to disbelieve them. They may all be great actors and totally believable in their role, but a lot of them do seem to want to bring external parts of themselves into a world where it just doesn't belong. And the excuse they're using for that is the one that's been used so often before. Well, there just wasn't the details, so I had to make it up. And we come back to the same question. If you had to make it up, why are you making it all in the first place? And there were some good things that they spoke about in the interviews. Largely, the amount of real-world sets that they've made, so they didn't have to CGI everything, and that I'm all for. Making the cities, putting the sets out into the real world, having the actors actually do the thing, I think is great, and it will make it look more realistic. Because one thing I am fed up with now is the Marvel way of making everything CGI. Of course, all this becomes a problem when they're moving countries, and that means every single set will have to be moved as well, and they're gonna have to build entirely new studios to do it. But that's their problem in between the series that they're gonna have to deal with. My, my concern with that is, my concern with that is the sheer amount of money it will cost. And my amount, my issue with that is the sheer amount of money that will cost. And is that extra money that Amazon will put in, or is that going to be taken out of the budget of later series? Because if it is, that will negatively impact any later series which are made simply because of that extra cost which was never planned for. So while there were some god parts in the interviews, and I did grow to like some of the cast, there's still a lot that concerned me, as you saw throughout the video. But those are just my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know down in the comments below. Like the video if you like the video. Subscribe. More videos like this in the future. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.